This past Tuesday, we saw something happen in the special election for New York's third congressional district that did not seem inevitable. The Democrat, Tom Suozzi, handily beat his Republican opponent, Mozzie Pillip, uh, luring, turning George Santos's old district blue once again. Republicans handpicked the candidate to run for the swing district. They did not hold a nominating contest. There was no primary. They were so confident that this woman checked all the boxes. With that in mind, the Republican Party then turned its attention to her Democratic opponent, Tom Suozzi, who is a former congressman from that district who defeated George Santos in 2020. They attacked him relentlessly with ads bashing his platform and slamming his record on immigration. Here's Tom Suozzi talking about his idol, Joe Biden. Well, let me make it perfectly clear that I support the president's agenda 100 percent. Suozzi's not just Biden's biggest fan, he's Biden's accomplice. Well, let me make it perfectly clear that I support the president's agenda 100 percent. Biden's open borders have resulted in record numbers coming in. It also means an increased risk of a terrorist attack. Well, let me make it perfectly clear that I support the president's agenda 100 percent. Republicans did everything they could to keep the 3rd District red, but Tom Suozzi won by nearly eight points. In the end, it didn't matter how good a candidate Mozzie Pillip was. The Republicans are running on deeply unpopular policies, and that's simply not the way to win elections. Joining me now is a person who intimately understands the volatility of New York swing districts and what it takes to motivate its voters. Max Rose is a former Democratic congressman. He served the state's 11th district that encompasses Staten Island and parts of South Brooklyn. Max, nice to see you again. Thank you for uh, being with us. I was curious, Tuesday Good night and, and Wednesday, Day, I, I, I mostly wanted to talk to you. You've been through this before. You've seen it. Um, uh, and in this mood, in this election, particularly in the areas around New York, which are not as Democratic as, as Manhattan and New York City are, talk to me about mm -hmm. how you saw this unfold in, in, the, in New York 3. Sure. So first of all, I think that we should not uh, underestimate the degree to which the Republicans were incredibly confident. Remember, they kicked George Santos out of Congress because they had a sense that they could hold on to this seat with someone else with perhaps a cleaner background. So that was the confidence that they were going into this with. And they rolled out their traditional playbook, which is try to scare the hell out of their voters by establishing the Democratic opponent as some type of radical or extremist. Now, all of that really isn't that interesting or surprising. What is interesting and surprising about the way this election turned out is what Tom Suozzi did successfully and how that actually pushed back on traditional political orthodoxy. What Suozzi did is he went face to camera in multiple commercials and repeated Republican talking points against him only to then show why they were absolutely crazy, insane, and that voters should reject those critiques and trust him. He went face to camera and said, it's not me that's crazy on immigration. It's not me that's irresponsible on this. It's the Republicans who are rejecting any type of bipartisan compromise because they want to keep this at it as a political issue. And by doing that, Swazi won by nearly double digits. It was an extraordinary victory that I think shows and proves out lessons for Democrats all across the country to include President Biden in his reelection. And what was interesting is that there are a number of districts across the country, in other parts of the country m mainly, where the, uh, although in our part of the country too, where the Republican candidate themselves is a built-in liability. But that wasn't the case here. After the George Santos incident, the Republican Party was not going to even allow a primary in this one. They picked a candidate who they thought was going to be uh, safe. She had some difficulty articulating uh, whether she was with or not with Donald Trump because she knew in a suburban New York riding uh, constituency that can go one way or the other. Um, talk to me about that, because in some of the country, you lose if you don't say you're Trump all the way, you're MAGA all the way. This candidate, Mozzie Pillip, had difficulty in in saying whether she was or wasn't. Yeah, of course. Look, she's, she was stuck between a rock and a hard place, and that, that's going to illustrative of the ways Republicans in swing districts are going to be in really difficult p positions. Remember, Mozzie was running in a Biden plus eight. 
There are three other congressional districts just in New York State alone that Republicans hold where Biden won those districts by more in 2020. There are 18 or now 17 Republicans throughout the country that are currently holding Biden seats. So this is going to be something we see across the country, which is how do you appeal to swing voters who absolutely reject the craziness that is the MAGA Trump agenda while at the same time trying to hold on to this rather sizable and very vocal base, which is absolutely beholden to the MAGA movement. Mazi tried to, you know, walk down this middle road and mm -hmm. it did not work and it's not going to work for any of them across the country. You know, the, this, the Republicans kind of shifted right into these talking points right after, which is, oh, special elections, they don't matter. Special elections, this is just something that won't, you know, be demonstrative of national trends. Well, this actually really reminded me of Connor Lamb's victory in 2017, yeah. where the Democrats had lost a few elections and were actually pretty down on their ability to take back the House. And then Connor won a really difficult seat in a special election and that opened up the pathway it showed the pathway to victory for democrats to flip difficult seats all across the country and the democrats to take back the house and i think that's what we're on track to do right now so let's talk about the topics because i was watching a lot of local news in the last few weeks in new york to watch the ads and the discussions about this in the swing district which is the same as your swing district in in some ways there were the similar mm -hmm. topics were um, immigration which is uh, something a lot of people talk about uh crime uh abortion uh to some degree democracy but it's it's not the it's not a it's not a major topic in this this part of the country uh, and of course economics um the cost of living where should democrats be leaning into all of the above or certain specific things? Because this really wasn't a big election about democracy or abortion in, in New York 3. Well, no, I would actually push back on that. I think that the, the underlying truth in elections like this one on Long Island and throughout the country is that voters have a general sense that there is pretty good reason to fear the Republican agenda. Voters know about January 6th. Voters know about the ways in which the Republican Party is totally beholden to Trumpism, which cares nothing about our constitutional democracy or our men and women in uniform. Voters absolutely understand the ways in which Republicans oppose across the board a woman's right to make her own health care decisions. But... What Swazi did here, which was so important, is he didn't use all those truths to then say, well, I'm not going to tackle head on what Republicans are saying about me. This is what the Democratic Party has done to all too often. I've been guilty of this mistake, too. You say, well, I'm going to ignore their attacks on me. I'm going to say, I know you are, but what am I? And shift to another topic like democracy, like choice. Swazi did that. He ran on, the, on those issues, but he also took the negatives against him head on and told voters why they aren't true. See, Republicans, all they can do right now is try to scare the hell out of voters to say, look, I know that we're anti-choice. I know that we have no respect for democracy, but if you vote for that Democrat, they're not going to keep you safe. If you vote for that Democrat, there's going to be this amorphous, weird, crazy horde of migrants streaming into your communities, and you should be more afraid of them than us. And Swazi said, I'm not going to ignore those attacks. I'm going to take them head on. And that's the lesson here. Max, I knew you were the perfect guy to have this conversation with, and I appreciate you always. Uh, and by the Thanks, way, given friend. that you have remarkable military training and could kill me with your little finger, if you're going to push back on stuff, I'm going to agree with you. Max Rose is a former Democratic congressman uh, from New York.